Deesky from Deesky Grills back with another cooking video and today we'll be making rotisserie chicken on the 48 inch Sunterra Santa Maria Grill. Very excited about this cook. We're going simple with our seasonings today. We're going to hit this rotisserie with salt, pepper, and garlic, lemon pepper, olive oil. That's it. That's all we're going to use on this rotisserie chicken. We're going to wrap it up so I have butcher twine. We're going to wrap it up get it on the spit and get it out there on that Santa Maria style grill. So I tell you what, I'm really excited about this cook because I get a chance to show you guys the 48 inch rotisserie attachment in motion. So we'll do what we always do. We'll take you down to the cutting board, show you how we're gonna season up this bird. It's about a six pound uh, whole chicken. And uh, I'll show you how we're gonna season it. We'll let it sit and rest while we get the fire started outside. So we'll be cooking on mulberry wood today. So that's the plan. I'll take you outside, show you the setup that we have for our grill. Uh, we'll get it lit up while this sits and kind of marinades and gets some of these great flavors inside. So I wanna thank you as always for joining me. We'll head to the cut board in a minute. We'll show you how to do it all. And as always, let's get cooking. Okay, you two, we are back. So let's check out the grill setup. So what we have here, is mulberry wood so i have five sticks of mulberry wood i have a few uh chunks that i'm gonna use to ignite and let these chunks be uh what we use to get the larger log started so i i um, haven't showed you guys before or at least i don't think i posted the video on it yet but we have the loof lighter so we're going to use this to get our flame started now in the meantime once we get this started we'll head in season up the chicken and let it rest uh, and kind of let those seasonings soak in while the fire starts ashing over. So that's what we're going to do right now. We'll fire it up. Um, the loof lighter uh, is pretty good. It takes about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, which is um, a whole lot quicker than using your regular lighter cubes or uh, any other method. So I found this to be the most efficient as far as getting your fire started and getting started on cooking. So here we go. we are back so what I did is uh, I tried to dry up the uh, chicken the best I can so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit it with olive oil again you know we use this as a binder uh, you know our wood is outside coming it's starting to ash over so that is awesome we'll go ahead and get this chicken uh, coated with olive oil first so this is an extra virgin olive oil that I'm using uh, nothing that you haven't seen me do in the past so same thing as a binder is what we're using this olive oil for, also to help for a crispy crust um, as this baby is spinning around on this rotisserie. So we'll, we'll do that first. Uh, now what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the lemon pepper next. So I'll do a good coat of lemon pepper. Now what I really want um, is to hit it hard with the salt, pepper, and garlic. But I think the lemon pepper is gonna put an awesome um, throwback type flavor with the uh, garlic, salt, and pepper to really, really make this uh, rotisserie chicken pop this evening. So, I'll uh, put that on, I'm just shaking, and to be honest, not much is coming out. It may look like it, I'm just shaking and getting very little out, but it's coating. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll come back and we'll hit it with our Suzy Q Santa Maria style seasoning. Again, that is parsley, salt, pepper, and garlic. And now with this, I do want to go heavy. And it comes out well, so it, it does good. So we'll hit it with that now. So you know we're always talking about building layers of flavor and things like that. So this is what we're doing right now. You know, anything, pretty much everything you make with garlic on it comes out well. It's just one of those type of seasonings. And we know that salt and pepper 
takes care of a lot of business as well. Okay, so we've hit that side. I'm gonna flip it over, we're gonna do the other. Same process, right? Olive oil first, nice rub down. Get those legs. Come on this side. Get the legs here. Okay, so there's that. Come in right back again with the lemon pepper. Now, what we're also gonna do, of course, is we're not gonna forget the cavity. So once I get all this done, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna season the cavity with the exact same spices. Now, of course, you know that you do that, so as this thing is turning around and all these juices are flowing, you want the inside of your chicken to be seasoned as well. So you put those spices in, so while it's spinning around, it is coating and marinating and making that inside just as good as the outside. All right, good enough dose of that, I would say. Try to get this leg a little bit better. Okay, that's that part. Now back with our Santa Maria style, salt, pepper, garlic, and parsley. I say this stuff's coming out good, but I'm fooling. It's really working me to death. Okay, now it's coming out better. There we go. Okay. So good coating now, now it's coming out quite thoroughly. Now we'll go on the inside. So now we're inside the cavity and what I wanna do is I just wanna hit it good in the cavity. I don't have to worry about olive oil on this. What I do here is I hit the cavity and I really try to get it good. And then I go in with my hand and I try to move the uh, seasonings around in there. It's always worked well for me like that. So I hit the cavity pretty good. We can do the same thing with the lemon pepper. We'll add a little bit of the lemon pepper as well. Got a lemon pepper. Get some of that shaking in there. So we stay with the same flavor profile inside and out. There we go. Now the lemon pepper's coming out good. Okay. And then I go inside. So I'm on this view here, but I'll show you. You can see the seasoning inside. I just go in with my hand and I go in and I coat the insides and the sides, the up, I mean the top, the bottom, and all the sides of that cavity. Okay, so there you can see that is coated on the inside. If you don't think it's enough, add a little bit more. That's what I'm gonna do. Same process. Want to be careful when you have your hands in there. Remember, there's little bones and things like that, so just just do it with caution. Okay, and this is what I officially call a seasoned bird. We'll let it sit here for a little bit. Uh, the grill is uh, starting to ash over. I'm looking out from here, and I see we still probably have about 15 minutes to go. This is a uh, seasoned bird that's ready to go. So what we're going to do now, while while we have this thing ready, is go ahead and tie it up. Okay, so what we have here is a nice roll of butcher's twine. Uh, I believe I purchased this off Amazon. And uh, we're gonna take a nice portion off and uh, get this chicken tied down pretty well. Okay, so when I'm doing a chicken, what I like to do is I start at the breast, I, I come across the breast and the wing, and I tie it. So there it is, we have that tight. Then I come down, and what I wanna do next is go down I want to come back around so I'm up under the chicken now I made a I went up under it and then I just want to grab the front side and grab those legs so let me turn it this way show you what I got so now we have the legs and then we just want to tie that off okay so here pressure on there and tie that baby off okay so our chicken is actually nice and ready to go it is wrapped I mean it is tied down cut our extra string off okay and here's what we got so we have this tied here and we have it tied there so there it is 
Okay, you two, it is time for us to go ahead and skewer and get our uh, chicken on the spit. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'll go ahead and remove our, uh, our holders. I don't have to remove this one, we can leave this in place, I'll just slide it back. All right. And then what we wanna do is go right through the chicken we're going through the, the, uh, the, the slots that, that are, the holes that are open. We're just going right inside. I'm just gonna push those claws right on in. That is awesome, they're in there well. Now we're coming on the other side, right here. And do the exact same thing. So we have our claws right here and we're just going right inside. So this, this baby, is secured, not going anywhere. Okay, well I'm not sure if you can see me, but it's not about seeing me, okay? So let's put our, our beautiful rotisserie chicken on. Here's this bird, ready to go. So I'm gonna slide the skewer through this side and pull it back far enough to where we can put the other side. This is the side that goes into the motor. We'll get that baby in the motor. Okay, so now she's in place. So all I'm gonna do now is put our rods in place. So that's gonna be our counterbalance and a stopper. So I'll screw the stopper on. Then our counterbalance. And then finally, our handle. Okay, that's it, she's ready to go. There's our chicken sitting directly over. I'll go ahead and close the door on here. Nothing left to do now except hit that start button. So let's get that going right now. Here she is, just a regular on and off switch and we will be cooking rotisserie style. Now I'll take you over to this side and let you see how it's going. All right, there she is. Now, the idea behind this again, you have your counterbalance. I'll show you that. Your counterbalance is to make sure that whatever you're cooking, it, it spins true. So this is just an offset weight that makes sure that whatever, again, that you're cooking is turning and it's, it's getting more of a, a smooth rotation so your motor's not working hard and things like that. You gotta have this counterbalance, it's very important. And what I didn't do on this grill is I didn't put my, uh, my uh, shelves in place. So I'll go ahead and put one of those on real quick. Because what we're gonna do is season this chicken again a little bit later. So we'll put that in place. Beautiful work tables. Like I said, love this grill. So that one work table is probably all we'll need. Uh, I'm gonna show you something else that I didn't share at the beginning that I'd like to coat this chicken in. So I'll go get it and then we'll talk about that. Okay, YouTube, so my plan towards the end of this cook is to hit this beautiful rotisserie with the Daddy Sam's ginger and jalapeno sauce. So I'm gonna baste and coat our bird with that towards the end of the cook. Um, can't wait to try this out. This got uh, great reviews. If you remember, I did a video uh, where we did a regular uh, spatchcock chicken with the Daddy Sam's and man, it was delicious. So I wanted to try a different flavor. Again, this is ginger and jalapeno. So we'll try this towards the end of the cook and we'll do what we always do. We'll just start basting little by little, letting it turn. We'll start checking our internal temps like we do, uh, making sure we hit um, 175 in the dark meat, 165 in the white meat. Standard procedures, right? Okay, we'll let this go a while and then I'll check back with you later. Okay, YouTube, I wanted to come back and check with you. We're about 25 minutes in right now. Our flame, again, is still going very, very well. Uh, what I wanted to show you is how we're starting to get a beautiful golden brown. I'm gonna come back and spray this with some cooking oil. Now, again, cooking oil is another um, secret for helping to keep it brown and help the skin get crisp. So we'll hit that real quick with some cooking oil. Um, so stay tuned, let me get that. Now what I'm really big on when I'm doing this is uh, adding that cooking spray. Now what I try to use is the Crisco Grill Master. Uh, it works really good, not only for your grill grates, but also for your food. So I'm gonna hit it with that. We'll give it a shake. 
And then, of course, you want to watch the flame. You don't want anything to spark up on you. So I'll just go a little high as it's spinning around. We're looking for the perfect rotisserie chicken. We're not messing around here. Beautiful. And then this is um, this will continue going on throughout the process. I'll continue spraying this maybe every 20, 25 minutes. Give it another spray just to keep it going brown. Now, one thing you get when you're doing uh, cooks like this, where your juices are flowing and falling into the fire, you get the beautiful smoke and the flavor from the wood itself. So as the juices hit, they hit the flame, which in turn gives you smoke. The smoke infuses inside of your meat. So that's what's happening right now. That's all the beautiful smoke that you see coming up. Okay, we'll check back in about 20 minutes, let you see how this is going. Just wanted to uh, stop and uh, let you see where we're at right now. Okay, YouTube, we are one hour in, and I'm gonna go ahead and stop the rotisserie right now and start checking our internal temperatures. As you can see, we have a beautiful golden brown crust. Uh, the nice pepperiness coming from the lemon pepper looks beautiful. So let's stop it real quick and see where we're at with our temps. Okay, so we're using our regular Thermal Pro pen. Um, I've showed this many times. This is a, a mainstay for me when I'm checking internal temperatures. So it's just a switchblade action. And I'm gonna go right into our thigh. And hoping you can see this, but in our thigh, we are already at 172 degrees, 73. We are pretty much done. It's time to start basting. Okay, YouTube, I had to turn the lights on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead now and hit this baby with our um, Daddy Sam sauce. We got our temperature where we wanted it, and I just wanna start basting it with this sauce as it cooks and try to get this flavors built in. So again, this is jalapeno and ginger. So really, really excited to see how this is gonna come out. So this cook has been going well. Um, I really, really like this grill. I like this attachment, I can definitely vouch that this is going to be a good thing so i have a one subscriber his name is john who uh, has been supporting me from day one and uh john's been asking me to make a whole pig on the rotisserie so what i'm doing now is just trying to hone my skills in on this thing starting off with this beautiful rotisserie chicken tonight uh, and then i'm gonna look into that because i do want to do a whole pig i think it'd be a real cool thing to do but for now we're just gonna go ahead and keep on basting this rotisserie chicken with the sauce, letting it turn around, which of course will uh, help it to soak in, help it to stick, and uh, get really, really full of flavor. Thanks for hanging in there with me. We can check out these final results at the cutting board pretty soon, but what I'm gonna do is just continue to do this uh, 10 minute interval intervals. And what I'm thinking is maybe I'll do it three times, uh, maybe four or so. Next thing you'll see is this beautiful rotisserie chicken that's basted in a ginger and jalapeno barbecue sauce on the cutting board. So here we are YouTube at the cutting board checking out the final results of our beautiful jalapeno and ginger rotisserie chicken cooked on the Sonterra Santa Maria style grill. So YouTube here's our beautiful rotisserie chicken after me uh, cutting it up. So I wanted to show you the final product. Look how beautiful this is. Look how succulent the breast meat is. This is good looking rotisserie chicken. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe to my channel. And remember, at d -Ski Grills, grilling is not a pastime, it's a passion. Thanks for joining me, YouTube. Try this recipe out, you'll enjoy it. Take care.